Hello and welcome back to Drive Driver Driven. I'm Humble and we're back on the Blue Unicorn rebuild and uh, kind of cleanup of uh, where we left off. So uh, last time we had done um, uh, some of the cleanup work with the rivets and the, the rear bulkhead and down in the luggage pod area. And today we're gonna continue on with the luggage pods or the luggage bins rather. Uh, these are the luggage bins um, I talked a bit about before uh, last time, uh, what I was happy with and uh, what I wasn't happy with. But right now what we have to do is um, clean up the, the fire retardant and the dirt off of these. And I, uh, I have a bucket set up outside. And uh, while we're at it, uh, we're going to clean up or try to clean up uh, another part as well. Our... Uh, oil to water heat exchanger. So um, I had run this on the Ultima before uh, and it was uh, sort of close to the fire. Um, you can see there was you know some burn in the tubes here but for the most part the heat exchanger itself is okay but uh, this is also the first destination for any oil pumped out of the engine. So all of those destroyed bearings and engine bits and aluminum and garbage uh, got shot straight into this thing. So what we have to do is uh, pull it apart and then carefully uh, clean out the, uh, the comb uh, of the, uh, the heat exchanger bits on the inside. So we're gonna clean our side pod or our luggage bins first. And then uh, we'll get to this uh, heat exchanger and I'll show you what's inside as we're cleaning it up. We uh, did the luggage bin. I'm not going to show you both of them because um, I think one is enough. Uh, so now we're going to focus on our oil to water heat exchanger. So I'm sure uh, a lot of you out there have seen uh, similar units on the bottom of like Subaru engines or on Honda engines uh, from like the 90s and 2000s, etc. And usually it's something that uh, is like a little sandwich adapter that goes between the engine block and uh, the oil filter. Uh, this unit is much larger, uh, but it serves the same purpose. And that is, uh, the idea is you're warming up the oil using engine coolant when the engine is cold. And then you're cooling the oil with engine coolant when the engine is hot. And the benefit there is that your engine warms up much faster and your engine oil comes up to temp much faster. And then on the extreme end, uh, when everything's hot, is that it helps regulate your oil temperature, keeping it closer and more in line to uh, your engine coolant temps. And the the downside there is, is that uh, uh, you're putting more thermal load on your radiator and your cooling systems. So you have to make sure that you're prepared for that. Uh, and with uh, this setup, this is a, a Laminova or Mocal or uh, what have you. The, uh, it's one of their largest, if not their largest, uh, heat exchanger. And you have uh, coolant that comes in through here. And then your engine oil will come out the top and bottom here. Now what I'm doing is we have to pull this apart because although the water passage may be fine, wherever the oil went through, uh, there's going to be tons of contaminants and debris from the engine exploding and all of that just going straight into um, our cooler here. So. All right, ceiling surface there looks... Good. 
Again, O-ring looks okay. Our oil adapter looks okay, but I'm not sure how well this is going to show up, but you can see debris already in there. And that's what we have to try and clear out because anything that's left inside of this, when we put everything back together, is just going to go straight back into the oil system and we don't want that. All right, so we've pulled off the ends here and uh, it's just more of a compression fit. So we have our gasket that sits on the end and then we have an O-ring that fits over the end of this uh, to help seal everything and then the cap goes on. I don't know if this uh, center comes out. Um, I don't wanna force it, but immediately, um, I've already drained some of it, but you can see uh, this is our oil input side and you can see the garbage coming in through here. Um, the You can see that uh, the water, if I line it up, water has a nice uh, clean passage all the way through, but where the oil comes in is just full of gunk uh, and where our oil comes out is eh, clean-ish, rel relatively clean. Um, there's still some fine particles, but the the way this works is our oil comes in from the bottom here. It has to spread around and go around uh, the, the diameter of our coolant pipe, and then it's uh, collected in this channel and then comes out our top fitting. And um, I can already tell there's just a ton of garbage in this bottom side. Um, I was able to pull some of it out uh, just with a screwdriver, just carefully prying out uh, this these larger chunks. Um, you can see just all this garbage here that's formerly engine. All this garbage that was in the oil used to be uh, our center main thrust bearing, our bearings in general, our engine in general. And a lot of that's just going to have to be uh, blown out or uh, pulled out with uh, compressed fluid or compressed air. So I'm going to see if I can't uh, uh, blow this out uh, with my air compressor and just see how much of that garbage we can pull out. But uh, I fear that we're going to have to actually remove this center section to clean out the combs. And I don't know if that's doable yet. I've done what I can to uh, clean as much debris out of this as I could. Um, you can see it's not perfect um, down. I don't know how well this will show up, but down in there, there's a little bit. Yeah, right in there, you can still see a little bit. And I'm not sure that I can really improve on that at all, uh, mainly because I'm not sure if I can remove this center element of the heat exchanger. Yeah, and this stuff is embedded in the fins pretty well. So without taking this um, uh, center, uh, you know, whatever main primary heat exchanger element out of uh, this extrusion, I don't see a way to really clean up any smaller bits of debris that are uh, down in between the fins here. I hit it with um, uh, some brake clean to thin everything out and um, hit it with compressed air to blow these channels out as best as I could. Um, lather, rinse, and repeat several times. Um, and I think this is just about as good as it's going to get. Um, I, before I put this all back together, um, I just do want to do a little searching and uh, maybe uh, email Mocal or Laminova um, to see if they have a, a method, a better method to clean these out or if I should ship it back and have them take care of it. But for now, um, I think that's about as far as I'm going to be able to go uh, here in the garage. Fast forward uh, a little bit uh, and I've tried to find parts or replacement heat exchangers 
uh, without too many leads, and I don't know if uh, MoCal slash Laminova still make these uh, heat exchangers or not. So uh, I'm going to have to call around here after the holidays and uh, see if we can't get some replacement parts. Because uh, if not, we're going to have to replace that with a more traditional uh, oil cooler and thermostat setup. So um, I guess we'll sort of put that on hold for a moment and I'll show you uh, what we're working on next, which is uh, actually the brakes because uh, I have to order some parts and it'll be better to get this knocked out sooner than later. We're not done with the rear of the car yet. What I wanted to do is replace these uh, Girling Master Cylinders with uh, basically something that isn't going to corrode like these ones did. So uh, the base master cylinder down here is a cast unit that's been, you know, bored out as need be. And then uh, normally there would just be a cap here. And I was worried that um, A, there's not enough uh, fluid in there. Uh, and they had a, a top that would sit on this with a uh, level gauge. But that even the level gauge would displace quite a bit of brake fluid inside the master cylinder. So I wasn't happy with it. So I got these extensions and put that on top to basically give me a more comfortable uh, level of uh, brake fluid, which, you know, really helped when uh, bleeding the brakes. But uh, I could more easily just at a glance see how much brake fluid was in the system. Um, but I was never really happy with these master cylinders. Before the fire, this was sort of a get around to a job. But now that the brake system is completely empty and basically needs to be redone anyway, um, this is a, as good a, an opportunity as it gets to replace those. So what I needed to do was figure out how big our master cylinders were so I could order replacements. And I think I'm going to get a, a either a Tilton... Uh, 75 or a 76 series. Um, the the throw is nearly the same. Uh, it's like less than uh, uh, whatever, a quarter of an inch shorter. Um, the bore sizes are the same uh, or are available in the same sizes. And the bolt pattern here where it bolts onto the firewall is the same. And then the push rod length um, is the same. So that'll be easy enough to swap the master cylinders out to a Tilton unit. And at the same time, I'm going to get a uh, Tilton um, reservoir that will mount up here on the firewall um, to make um, access to the brake fluids, breeding the brakes and, brakes and clutch much easier. And again, uh, giving you better at a glance uh, visual inspection of the, the quality of the brake fluid and how much of it there is in the system. Again, mostly track car stuff. Um, you, you wouldn't really need this kind of level of maintenance on a typical street car. But since I track this car so much, uh, I really, really wanted to be able to, to do visual inspections more quickly than I could before. Uh, speaking of visual inspections... Uh, so when we built the car, uh, my idea to put these uh, little rubber boots on the heim joints to protect them from the elements. And while, again, it seemed like a great idea at the time, and it may have mostly worked, uh, during the fire, uh, some of the boots had melted. Uh, some of them had trapped water from the firefighting efforts uh, in the back of the car. And um, they sort of did the, the opposite of what they were meant to do. So um, with apologies to everybody who helped put those on because they were an extreme pain to install on the car. Um, uh, we got those cut off and uh, I'll kind of show you what they look like. This is a new boot. And uh, we, we've removed it here from the suspension but it would sit on something like this. And the real issue was, is here on the sides and then here in the end, 
Um, you would have to get that around the spacers that were here and then the actual heim itself uh, to fit it over. And uh, we ended up like tearing a bunch of these and um, uh, just had a huge difficulty installing them just on the heim and then trying to get these spacers in uh, uh, and seated correctly. Uh, it was just, a, like I said, a real, real pain to get these in. Here's an example of one that we had pulled off. Um, it's definitely thinner, more pliable, um, didn't age very well. Looking at the condition of the Himes, of course, the front's okay here. And again, on this side, um, although the Himes are in, in very good shape, on my car, I opted for a Heim joint style suspension from Ultima. Um, you would have this or you would have uh, urethane um, bushings as an option. Um, because this is a track car and because um, of its high performance nature, uh, I wanted uh, these adjustable suspension setups so that I could really dial in the car the way I wanted it to. Um, I do not know if this style of suspension is still available from Ultima. Um, so if anyone has talked to them recently, I would, I would love to hear if uh, they were able to spec uh, heim joints or not, uh, or to upgrade the suspension to a heim joint or not. Uh, moving on to the back, again, our rear heims are okay. And you can see this really tight space here on the forward bit. And that's to clear the spring and everything here in the back. But those boots would rub here on the chassis and they would squeak so bad and it drove, drove me crazy. Here, there was a lot of corrosion from water that was trapped in the boot. Um, down here, we had this boot had pretty much melted, but the Heim itself looks okay. Um, I am a little wary of the, the condition of this. But again, having the the chassis on the ground with the wheels on, um, I didn't feel any unnecessary play or anything like that. Uh, generally speaking, the Himes are in, in uh, good shape. We'll see if the one questionable one back there that um, had water and corrosion on it is still good. I think it is. I think it just needs to be brushed and cleaned up. But everything else up here was looking good. So um, I'm sort of happy with that, even though we're removing all those. Okay, got a little work done and uh, I've got the master cylinders out as you can see. Um, I figured out that the uh, the sizes are uh, three quarter, five eighths and uh, the clutch cylinder is a 0.7, uh, which is a weird size, but uh, it's uh, three quarter inch for the front, five eighths inch for the back and then uh, yeah, 0.7, or just under three quarter inch for our clutch master cylinder. Uh, pro mechanic tip, um, make sure those are empty before you undo all your lines because I thought they were and they were not. A Little bit of a mess, um, but I also removed some pedals so I could uh, show you guys one of the uh, improvements um, I was going to make and why. Uh, this is the Ultima brake pedal and this is the Ultima uh, clutch pedal. And what I've got it next to is, um, I believe this is like a Will, uh, Willwood or a Tilton, um, just a stamped sheet metal welded together pedal. Uh, very sturdy. This is actually out of a, a former race car that I used to have. Um, and I love these pedals. Um, they, they're they, they were one of the, the better pedal sets that I've used. They're just a little on the heavy side is all. What I want to change is uh, the pedal effort. So on the Ultima pedal, if you look, you can see that the distance from the pivot point here to where the master cylinder uh, attaches or the, the push rod attaches to the pedal is larger than over here on uh, the other pedal, on the... Uh, whatever, Tilton or Willwood. And on the flip side, the uh, this pedal is longer than the Ultima pedal. And I did some measurements and everything will fit in the car, but 
this is the difference here is from our pivot to where the master cylinder attaches is 58 millimeter for the Ultima bit and the pedal length you measure from your pivot here to basically the middle of the pad where this bolt is and that's 204 millimeters and that gives us uh, the pedal ratio of uh, basically three and a half to one so um, for basically every inch of travel that this uh, pivot point makes uh, this way this one will move three and a half times as much um, I think the way this will work and any phys physics geeks out there can um, correct me if I'm wrong is for every pound of force that we put on the pedal here uh, it will exert three and a half times that amount of force uh, but less travel here on this pivot point what I wasn't happy with is on the Ultima uh, heavy, heavy braking zones. Um, when you're uh, basically flying into a braking zone off a of front straight, uh, where I was doing 160, 165 miles an hour uh, deep into the braking zone, uh, your threshold braking, as it were, is about 1,000 to 1,100 uh, PSI in the lines. That's what I was seeing in my logs. And uh, in order to get that sort of line pressure, um, I had to do, you know, basically leg presses on the brake pedal. Um, every braking zone for, you know, however many braking zones, like, you know, whatever, 8, 13, however many corners there were. But even harder on front straights, back straights, or any high speed entry corners. It's just fatiguing. It, it wears you out. And the brakes were good, but they could be better. And uh, with this smaller pedal ratio, um, I found that I, it didn't give me the, the confidence that I thought it should. Uh, another sort of get around to it was um, swapping uh, these Ultima pedals out for uh, these uh, longer pedals um, because I was sure they would fit in the wheel well. And with, uh, with these, you can see it's longer again. Um, the pivot point is actually shorter than on the Ultima. And then um, because the, the actual pedal itself is longer, uh, it gives us a better ratio. So it's, you know, 40 millimeters to our pivot point uh, and uh, roughly about 215 millimeters to the, the middle of the pad here. And it, and it gives us a, a pedal ratio of 5.375. Again, same as before for every... Uh, pound of force that I apply up here in the middle of the paddle, uh, it's going to be 5.3 times that amount of force, but again, reduced travel down here at the bottom. So basically, the, the, the way this is going to work is the pedal itself will move more, but there's going to be more force applied down here at the pivot. Again, from, from uh, every, all the setup before, there's plenty of room for the, the pedals I just needed a little more leverage, uh, and that's what these pedals will give me. So this is the brake pedal. This is the clutch pedal. Um, something I thought was interesting is in the uh, pad wear, so this is, if I can get this to stand up. So this is our clutch pedal, and you can see where I would always rest my foot on the side uh, uh, during like longer trips. And then on the brake pedal, from all my heel towing, I wore off the opposite side of the whatever sandpaper or the grip material there. Now, these are not a uh, direct swap. Um, you can sort of see there's this uh, brass bushing here. And then again, on the Ultima bit, uh, the Ultima part has a slightly smaller diameter. And so on these pedals, what I did was um, push the bushing out of the Ultima part and put it into uh, the other pedal here. And uh, that has uh, basically allowed me to just bolt this in. Um, this pedal is more narrow than the Ultima tube here. So what I'm gonna do is probably uh, press this uh, uh, brass bushing out again, uh, sand it down to uh, basically get it flush with the sides here. And then there's uh, nylon bushings uh, with thin spacers that go on either side of this pedal in the, the factory pedal setup for 
uh, for these guys. And uh, that should also help eliminate some uh, squeaking that I would get out of these Ultima pedals. Um, and that's actually something I'm looking forward to as well. Uh, let me swap this bushing really quick and I'll put both pedals in the car um, so that you can sort of see the difference in height between uh, the new pedals and the old pedals. Well, I got all excited and finished putting the bushings in the pedals and then put them in the car to test fit. And uh, let me show you how they look. So a little bit of an angle there. Um, you can see plenty of uh, clearance on the uh, steering shaft here for the brake pedal. Um, again, everything lines up well with the uh, clutch as well. So I'm not too worried about the uh, uh, gas pedal being a little bit lower. In fact, um, that'll only help with the uh, uh, heel toe ability of these pedals since um, I'll have the ball of my foot up here and I can just swing my heel over to tag the gas pedal. Uh, I'm actually really, really uh, happy with the uh, the arrangement here. So I'm gonna order some uh, new master cylinders and we'll get those set up and get them put in the car. Um, the pedals themselves, uh, I need some uh, precision washers to fit down in here, but otherwise uh, they work uh, great in this application. And um, I did a little searching. I found out these are uh, Willwood uh, pedal set. So uh, any other Ultima owners out there looking to uh, do a similar mod, um, you can just use these uh, Willwood pedals. Um, they sort of bolt in, but you will have to swap the bushings inside the lower pivot with the Ultima ones or create your own or uh, drill out uh, the mounts themselves. But other than that, uh, uh, looks great. Uh, I think that's going to do it this time around. A um, little bit of uh, distraction with the pedals, but since I had to order these parts anyway, it's better that I, I get that bit done now and I can order the master cylinders. And while we're waiting, uh, I can get back on the back of the car. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.